Time Warner Cable is pleased to be an underwriting sponsor for Carolina Week. Coming up on the January 24th edition of Carolina Week, we continue our profile of North Carolina's representatives with Senator Richard Burr. You might not be as safe as you think you are when walking around UNC campus. I'm Will Hallman and I'll show you why. It's a big weekend for Tar Heel basketball. We'll preview Carolina's big games and who to watch out for. Laura Pagano will have your Carolina Week 4-day forecast. All that and a special way to make international students feel more at home. Carolina Week starts right now. From the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, this is Carolina Week. Hello and welcome to the Wednesday edition of Carolina Week. I'm Kate Schoen. And I'm Adam Rue. Thanks for joining us. The day after his State of the Union address, President Bush is hoping to gain support for his policies from both sides of the aisle. UNC students eagerly awaited the President's speech Tuesday night as they discussed what he'd talk about in the annual address. Chairman of UNC College Republicans Tyson Grin said, says domestic issues carry more weight than international relations. But he still wants to know more about the President's stance on the war. The troop increase in Iraq, um, I consider myself a supporter of the President, but I, I'd like to hear more details about that. In addition to the war, the other top issues of the address included the state of the economy, health care, the war on terror, immigration reform, education, and alternative energy sources, including ways to reduce our dependence on oil. While our local U.S. House representatives are busy with the new majority's agenda, Carla Babb is in the studio to tell us about her Washington, D.C. meeting with Republican Senator Richard Burr. Carla? The House isn't the only branch of Congress hard at work, and the majority party isn't the only one with big plans for this term. I just want to know what your plans are for this term. Education will probably be the number one issue that I focus on this year. Primarily the um, expansion of uh, higher education opportunities, the affordability issue, but also the K-12 through dropout uh, problem that we have in this country and very predominant in North Carolina. Burr says his other top priority will be health care provisions for North Carolinians. He wants to make health care affordable and accessible for people, whether they live under a harvest sun or big city lights. Senator Burr also says he wants to center medical practices on overall health. It's important in North Carolina because health care is the largest employer in our state. It has surpassed agriculture and others. We've got to focus our health care system back on prevention and wellness and less on the treatment of disease. When it comes to the minimum wage, Burr is still deliberating. He feels he must consider each state's input. 29 states, including North Carolina, have increased the minimum wage above the federal requirement of $5.15. If every state has a minimum wage, why do we need a federal minimum wage? Uh, it's a legitimate question, and I'm not sure that I'm smart enough to have the answer to it. Mm -hmm. I think it's important, though, that we look at it and ask, can we use the increase in minimum wage to achieve other benefits um, that the American people need? Uh, I plan to offer an amendment that will provide the employer the option of providing the extra wages in health care benefits versus wages. Burr says his ability to compromise comes from working in the Senate. He says the Senate rules allow one senator to stop the entire process. So the Senate's designed to have uh, ultimate consensus among all the members regardless of their party affiliation. Well, um, you sound like a very bipartisan person. Um, do you think that the 110th Congress is going to be bipartisan or do you think it's going to be harder to get things passed? I think that the Senate has a tendency of nonpartisanship on most, most issues. This is a presidential election cycle. Uh, I think 14 percent of the Senate is currently announced as running for the president. That makes it somewhat more difficult. But I happen to be one of those senators that wakes up in the morning and looks in the mirror and does not see the future president of the United States. So I can uh, go through the 110th Congress focused on my legislative agenda, the legislative agenda that I think is important in North Carolina. The senator is in the minority for the first time in his life. 
So, Carla, what does Senator Burr think Republicans need to do to regain majority status? Adam, he says the party wasn't focused on what needed to be done. He says Republicans have to display leadership that the American people want and trust. Carla Babb reporting live. Thanks, Carla. Those national politicians might have some future competition. It's a big week for prospective student politicians. While most of you settle back into your daily routines and get your schedule set, student candidates are gearing up for UNC's 2007 campus elections. Board of Elections Chair Jim Brewer says he wants to see a fair election and lots of student participation. We're all, whether it's a mistake or if it's blatant, you know, that the integrity of the elections is not violated. I think a lot of issues this year have really shown their face that uh, are a part of um, student government and that, you know, students really honestly do have a say in stuff like, you know, the ticket distribution. Tuesday was the last day to hand in candidate petitions. The Tar Heel faithful have another way to stay connected to the university their own ashes. UNC Memorial Grove now holds the cremated remains of 16 people. At least 200 others want the same honor. But your eternal resting place has a price, $350. That includes spreading your ashes in the grove and having your name on the wall of remembrance. University officials say the grove will be the resting place of many Tar Heels because the old Chapel Hill Cemetery is already full. A new kind of magnet high school is changing the way some families think about college. Here on the medical campus of Wake Tech, 90 high school freshmen begin their college education. The Wake Early College of Health and Sciences offers a special five-year program. It combines high school curriculum with college courses that qualify graduates for an associate's degree. Principal Jim Palermo has shepherded the program through its first semester. He says this unorthodox education might be the golden chance for some students to have a brighter future. Because it is offering an associate degree or two years of college credit free of charge, we're hoping that this would give some students a leg up uh, who might not have thought about college or been able to afford it. It's taken some time for these ninth graders to adjust to taking classes with college students, but they all seem determined to make the most of the opportunity. Some people go to college, but others join the military. The military presence in Fayetteville, though, isn't the only thing that makes this town unique. Jennifer Carpenter has the story. When people get off the train in Fayetteville, they come to find Fort Bragg and a long-standing military town. What they don't expect to find, however, is a thriving adult entertainment industry. Like it or not, the strip clubs and gentlemen's bars here in Fayetteville are what keeps the economy strong. About face. It's primarily a military town. Fayetteville has a totally diverse economy. I mean, it's, it covers all. It's, I mean, covers all bases. Um, military, um, a lot of private, a lot of private businesses and stuff like that. Fayetteville's adult entertainment industry relies on soldiers' salary to keep it afloat. It's built up a lot around here. I think if the military base was not here, Fayetteville would be nowhere near as big as it is. Miss Holly, the owner of Uptown Undies, notices a surge in customers with the soldier payday. She asked us not to show her face. Open all the time, but we cater more towards dancers, like payday. They'll come in and buy a little bunch of new stuff. Right now, most of the troops are gone, and they're like hurting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they get no business. Strip clubs aren't the only ones that are suffering. Lingerie stores, pawn shops, and tattoo parlors are also enduring Fayetteville's economic slump. Businesses blame the war in Iraq for their losses. We mostly notice when they're away. Whenever they leave town, it seems that you know things generally kind of slow down a little bit and business slows down and everything like that. Here in Fayetteville, there are more strip clubs per square mile than any other place in the southeast. There is no denying that the soldiers play a key impact on what kinds of private businesses survive here. That was Jennifer Carpenter reporting from Fayetteville. There are typically about 30,000 soldiers stationed at Fort Bragg. We know backpacks can hurt your back, but what about shoulder bags? When we return, we'll take a look at the stress caused by women's shoulder bags. And we'll tell you a new way to help your pudgy pooch knock off those extra pounds. Thank you.